So I did my first uh, attempts in uh, writing software at about 14. At that time, it was um, Visual Basic. Some people said it's not a very good idea, but still, uh, <laughs> this opened up my appetite for uh, creating software. And eventually, I studied this and, um, well, uh, got deeper into it. And uh, this is what uh, makes me stand here today with this uh, weird thing on my head. Um, the red cross you see is actually the spot I am um, looking at. Um, I'll get back to this later. My um, talk today will be about um, user interfaces, um, all types of user, user interfaces. Um, so, basically, the talk will have two parts. Um, first of all, I will um, show you a little bit about how we uh, optimize user interfaces today. And um, secondly, I'll get into a more uh, specific area, which is a thing I've been working on for the past few years. And um, both of these uh, sections will take us to our vision, which I will show in the end. Uh, but first of all, what am I looking at? So the weird thing you saw on my head was um, used to track my eye. Uh, it works like this. Basically, there's a small camera filming my eye from the front. And um, there's another camera filming the scene, which was, it was filming you, actually. Um, the whole technology, as I said, is called eye tracking. And um, the computer does the rest. It grabs the images from the two cameras. It uh, does a little bit of uh, linear algebra and some other stuff. And in the end, it can show us what we're looking at. So anybody who's wearing this, this headset, um, we can know of him where he's looking at. Um, now, you might ask, why is this uh, important? Why do we want to do this? Well, basically, we're using this technology today to understand interaction. We want to understand the interaction between a human and um, any type of interface uh, that was created for that human. This whole field is called ergonomics. And it's a field we've been active in over the, the past few, uh, few years. Um, to give you a better idea of what it's about, uh, let me quickly show you some, uh, some examples. So this first example I'm going to, uh, to show you now is about um, optimizing uh, the dashboard of a car. So it's the user interface which makes um, which uh, enables us to, to drive the car and to use its different functions. And um, in this uh, experiment you can see right here, uh, we have a recording of a, a person driving around in a simulator. Um, we are recording what the person is looking at. We are recording uh, some other data. We are, we are filming uh, different uh, aspects of, of the whole simulation. For example, hand movements and uh, body movements. Uh, we are also uh, recording uh, different types of uh, data from the car. We are also recording physiological data. So everything uh, in this, uh, everything which is relevant for uh, how the user interacts with a with car, with a user interface. In the end, um, what we want to get is um, less driver distraction. So the main, the main idea in this kind of interface is to, to cause less driver distraction. Um, there's a funny example. I don't know if you know this, but the first time I got into this, it took me like two minutes to find a way to reverse this car. Um, this was about, uh, about 10 years ago, sorry if I'm mistaken. And, um, well, the difference to this, which is its current version and one of the best interfaces in a car available today, the difference is a lot of study of ergonomics, including a lot of eye tracking, uh, to enable placement, colors, graphics, everything to make it, to make it look uh, and be, uh, be nice. Um, I have to assist my assistant for a small... Assist 
Okay. Okay. The next example I'm uh, I'm showing you is about a shelf in a store. Some of you might argue that this is not a real user interface, but um, actually it's it's really the user interface between you as a consumer and uh, someone trying to sell you something. And um, in this study here, which is also based on eye tracking, we can see where about uh, 30 people have looked at on the shelf uh, where some products were placed. Um, you see the red, the red areas uh, are the areas which have uh, attracted most attention. And uh, what we learn in, from, from an experiment like this is uh, how to place products so that the, the right products attract most attention. So this is something you probably um, come by every day, uh, but you might actually not even know that it's done using methods like this, at least in, uh, in uh, bigger and um, very uh, important stores. Um, obviously, one type of interface which we are constantly optimizing and where, uh, which will actually be part of the, of the uh, vision we have is web pages and software. So we can optimize uh, web pages and software using eye tracking because in the end, uh, whatever software you create, you have to, to make, um, make its use efficient. So you have to make uh, sure that users are guided to the right functionalities. You have to make sure they find things quickly. And uh, in order to, to accomplish this, you can study uh, ergonomics of these of these uh, uh, applications. Uh, now, before I uh, continue, let me give you a quick overview of how we actually measure uh, and how we optimize interfaces. So, basically, first of all, of course, we create a user interface, whatever type of user interface it is—a car dashboard, a, a software. Um, we define some use cases, so we. We define the typical scenarios in which someone would use this, uh, this interface. Like, for example, in a car, it's something like use the satellite navigation to enter Berlin Alexanderplatz as a destination. Uh, we pick some subjects, some test subjects, and we basically um, make them go through our use cases in a simulation and measure everything we're interested in uh, during, those, during that simulation. I've, put the red cross here to represent the eye tracking, but we measure a lot of other stuff, as you've seen. Um, in the end, we look at the, the recorded results, and we anal analyze a lot of things, like, for example, uh, time spent looking at different things in the car. So we're interested in how much did he look at the satellite navigation, how much did, did he look in, at the road, because he should look most of the time at the road, obviously. Uh, we are also interested in eye movement uh, because that gives us a hint about how stressful some situations might be. Uh, we're doing different um, um, visual methods like heat maps and shadow maps. The heat map is the thing you, you've seen before. And we are also doing compl more complex calculations like, for example, calculating reaction times. So uh, if the car in front of you breaks, how many uh, milliseconds did you, did you need to break yourself? And then, for example, we test that with different warning systems, so visual warning, audible warning, see what's the difference between those. Um, so in taking this, uh, this analysis result into account, um, the, user, the, the creators of the interface actually go on and modify things like buttons, uh, their placement, the workflow of an interface, colors, graphics, contrasts, uh, audible warnings, tactile feedback, all this stuff gets modified, and um, the cycle starts again, um, which means we do the modifications and run through the whole loop. And of course, you can do it uh, in an iterative process many times, but in the end, at some point, the user interface is ready, and the car gets delivered, the software gets uh, installed, uh, so that's where that's the point where it um, uh, ends right now, where the optimization ends right now. But um, one thing which has not been taken into account as good until now is that we're actually different users. So 
these optimizations we do, they're actually done for the average person. Your, your normal car today is, is built for uh, someone who's uh, at most 1 meter 95 tall. If you're taller than that, you might have a problem using some functions of the car, or they might not be placed optimally. That's um, kind of a problem because, well, in hardware, it's pretty difficult to adapt things. Um, when was the last time that your volume knob on your car radio got a little bit bigger because you're using it very often. It's a, it's a thing which cannot happen. It's a little, it's a little bit difficult. On the other hand, in, um, in software, we actually have the potential to do such modifications. And software by itself is a, is a thing which is very easy to change uh, while it's running or fast to change while it's running. And um, I'll just leave you with this idea uh, until a little bit later. I have to switch the slide now. Okay, thanks. Um, and until I get back to this, um, I want to uh, give you a little bit of insight into what uh, user interfaces I actually interact with. What's what's my experience with user interfaces in the last last uh, few years? Because this is what's what we're going to, what our vision is going to be about. Um, so basically, one of the things I'm doing every day and uh, probably many of you do the same thing, is work a lot with um, unstructured information. Documents, emails, tasks, appointments, stuff like that, which you, you actually are you're, you're used to using a lot of um, different types of applications to read, organize, remember, act based on these, uh, on these things. And um, while all these applications, once in a while, get a new uh, design in terms of look and feel. So they're colored a little bit different. They're, they're getting uh, some new fonts and stuff like that. It's actually um, quite surprising that uh, during the past, let's say, 30 years, the, the structural elements, the way these applications interact with us, they, they haven't changed. So we all, we have, like at those times, we have lists, we have trees, like in the file explorer, we have uh, tables, but it's still same elements, the same elements are there. Uh, so this is kind of our challenge. Uh, the challenge we took on and the thing which our vision is related to is what could actually be next? How could a user interface look like which leaves behind all, these, uh, all, these, all this old stuff? And um, we've come up with some, with some requirements for this. Um, first of all, we want a, a, an interface which is uh, spatial and visual. Because we are humans, we are, we are uh, used to orienting very well in, uh, in uh, two-dimensional spaces on, on Earth. We, we find ourselves around very easy. Uh, then another requirement is we actually don't want separate tools for for uh, handling the same information. So we want to group information. I don't care if it's an email or a file or if or a record in the database. I actually just care that if it belongs together logically, it should be in the same place. Um, then another thing which should happen is things should get really touchscreen friendly because we are. Uh, using touchscreens in a natural way, it's, a, it's a, an evolution which is very, very natural. So we wanted something which works very well with that. We also wanted to be able to um, use different levels of detail. So use the same software interface to get a very good overview, but use it also to go uh, further into detail in a very natural way. Um, and last but not least, we wanted to have an interface which is able to adapt to its user. And you'll see more of that a little bit later. So this is actually where uh, ergonomics and my experience with user interfaces, where they get together. And um, well, that's the main thing I'm going to show you now, is uh, UIs that adapt, so user interfaces that, that adapt. Um, our main inspiration for this uh, came from digital maps, because digital maps are spatial, um, they're touchscreen friendly, you can work with them in a, in a very natural way, and uh, digital maps show different levels of detail very well. If you zoom in, you see many in the streets and all details, if you zoom out, you see the big picture. And um, well, let me show you how this um, looks like 
at the moment. Um, I have it here on my screen. So what, what you see here is something we call uh, an information map. It's basically everything related to um, what I have to work with in, in a, at a certain moment in time. Uh, each dot actually represents uh, an, a concrete item. So for example, do some dots might be uh, projects, some smaller dots might be really emails, some, some other dots might be tasks out of our uh, task management system. And um, the nice thing about this is it's, it's spatially oriented. So for example, uh, if we take the project in the upper right corner, uh, everything which is related to that is actually in that area of the screen. And uh, if you take this one down here, uh, you actually see that it has some, some red notifications, which means uh, things need my attention in that area. Um, the interaction with, uh, with the system is uh, very intuitive. You can move it around. I, I'm using the touch screen here. Uh, you can move it around like a map. You can actually zoom in. Uh, my touch screen is a little bit disturbed by the lights in the back, but still it does something. Um, so you see when I zoom in, I actually suddenly get more detail to the view. And um, I, can, I can interact with, uh, with these dots. I can move them around because let's say this is actually more relevant uh, in, in related to that. So I just, I just put it there or I, I make it bigger because it's uh, more important to me today. And um, now, for example, I want to see what this notification is about here. Sorry. So you see, this is actually a new email I got. Uh, so I just zoomed in. Obviously, if you don't have uh, lights shining on your screen, it works better. Um, I just zoomed in, and suddenly I see uh, the content of this email. But on the other hand, if I zoom out again, uh, I get the big picture again. Um, now, this is what we are working on. This is the, the present. But let me, let me give you a, bit, a little bit more of a, of a vision of this, because what happens when I um, put on my, my eye tracking glasses? I need a little bit of time here to, to set something up. Um, but basically what happens uh, is you will see that there's a certain type of, of adaptation which uh, this interface does while, uh, while I'm, I'm interacting with it. So if, not, if I now look at the screen, I can basically move it around using my eyes. I can get details to elements uh, just, by, just by looking at them. And um, imagine you, you walk into your office uh, in the morning and uh, you just have your coffee and uh, you have a big wall with, with this information map in front of yourself. And just while drinking your coffee and looking at stuff which, uh, which just uh, appeared, uh, since you've last looked at it, you can, you can get details and you can uh, interact with the system without, uh, without even having to touch it. Uh, so this is uh, basically uh, the vision of how you could interact with such a system in a, in even more intuitively than, than with the touch screen. And um, the nice thing, uh, the future, so to speak, uh, would be that um, actually the system starts um, remembering my interactions with it, and this is this is something which uh, which is very important because the the if the system remembers my interactions with it, it will be able to learn. It will be able to apply uh, uh, artificial intelligence techniques. Uh, for example, we are we are looking into using uh, neural networks right now. Uh, deep neural networks to make the system learn from all the interactions it had with us. And while, because it's learning, it can adapt. And that's, that's the main thing which, 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 which it will do. 
so things like this will become possible, where during a period of time the system actually learns that stuff which belongs together should be moved together, and it really does this for me. So, for example, uh, if I use, if I look at certain documents always in the same period of time, the system knows, okay, the guy is actually always using these documents together. So the system will go on and move them closer to each other. If I look a lot at something, uh, it will get bigger. If I uh, look at stuff uh, very little time, then the system will know, okay, uh, not very important, let's make that smaller, push it to the background. And um, of course, another thing which can happen is, when we get new elements, like for example, imagine you received an email uh, which is related to a subject. This email can actually be uh, placed in the right uh, position um, just automatically because the system knows by its content that it's actually belonging about in that area. And of course I can interact with it and say, no, you're not right, it was this place. Uh, but it will even learn from that, and uh, the next time it, will, it might do it better. Now, this is kind of our vision about, um, about um, one type of software which can, or of user interface, which will adapt to ourselves. And it's, it's a type of organic adaptation, so uh, we want this to be a permanent thing which the software does to make our interaction with it uh, more efficient uh, during time. Thank you.